there. My name is John Bay. I am the CEO of Standard Uranium. We are a Canadian junior uranium exploration company. We have five projects all in the Athabasca Basin, and we are moving those forward from early stage to the development line. We've got uh, five projects we're going to be working on this year. I look forward to uh, talking to you, Matt, and explaining about those projects and the work we have planned for 2022. Mr. John Bay, good to see you, sir. We saw you in <laughs> uh, London, didn't we? Back in, De back in December, how the world has changed yeah. somewhat. <laughs> <laughs> it's mm -hmm. been mildly. Um, yeah. Should we should we have a little chat about the macro before we dive into your projects? Because I think you you seem to have got yeah, all your ducks definitely. lined up. But I want to talk about what the macro means to you. So, uh, what, what's your read on the situation? Well, hey, it's uh, the, the situation happening in Ukraine right now is, is tragic and it's horrific. And for us, you know, we're we're sitting back and watching things develop. But we know, as a uranium exploration company. This is going to have massive impact, specifically for you know everyone in the whole space, but for people based in North America. We realize you know the U.S. is looking at this with their 94 nuclear reactors, starting to realize that that supply coming from Russia or Kazakhstan is going to be limited in the future, and they're going to have to start looking more internally, and that is to uh, friendly allies from Canada, the U.S., and so forth. So we think the next few years are going to be phenomenal for. The infrastructure getting built in North America, and we believe we're going to be on the front end of that. Okay, well, I look, I'm, I'm we're kind of looking for the kind of new stories kind of moving through. So we've seen, it's been kind of fun, mm -hmm. fun and games in the uranium space, obviously since Sput arrived, we talked about it in December, um, end, mm -hmm. of, end of last year, I think the Russia uh, situation in terms of sanctions and, you know, the movement of uranium will mm -hmm. be really interesting as we, as that unfolds over the next few uh, weeks and months. But let's let, let, let's talk uranium in Athabasca. Um, you, we, we kind of caught up with the Gustav Davison River and, and, and Sundog last time around, and obviously got your project in the East too. So, when he gives the update on Davison River first, um, what's what's going on? Sure. So we finished our third drill program last uh, summer. We are now getting that ready for drilling that again. So we're currently we're drilling Sundog, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But starting in May. We're going to be back to Davidson River, and that means bringing all our team back up there and drilling our, first, our fourth drill program, which is exciting. I mean, each drill program we've done, we've got more and more clues to point us in the right direction. So we're really excited to be out there drilling another large program on Davidson River and getting uh, you know drills into all four of our main conductors. This time we're going to get to the Thunderbird, and we've got a remarkable uh, drill crew coming working with us this summer as well. So we're really excited about that. Okay, and then let's do Sundog, and then I want to talk about strategy. What's happening up Sunday sure. even as so, a winter crow program? Uh, I think, yeah, I think most of our investors and people that know us know we started drilling there at the uh, start of this month. I was just out there a few days ago, and there's some videos coming out over the next few weeks showing, uh, you know, day by day what we're doing up there. Some visits to the drill sites and, you know, look around camp, what it's actually like in the far north of Saskatchewan, minus 35 to minus 40. And uh, it's chilly, but the drills are all working. Guys are pretty excited. We're getting drills into the ground and getting core coming out now. So uh, that program is well underway. That'll be about a six-week program. And uh, we hope we get some results back to our shareholders in the immediate future. Okay, so you, you've talked in the past about having spent like 10 million bucks on, on the drilling. And you, you said to me in December this year, three or four million bucks uh, is, is the plan. Is that is that still the plan? Or do you think with the... Mo it's a difficult one, right? Because your, your, your shares have since yeah. we spoke kind of flatlined. They had a bit of a bump like everyone else in, in uranium when Split was doing its buying in the market. But it's mm -hmm. kind of moving sideways at the moment. So how do you, how do you come at this? Slow and short and steady? Or do you try and accelerate things? Good question. So yeah, our shares are moving up and down like everyone in the market right now. We sort of follow that same uranium trend, uh, you know, it's not where we'd like it to be right now. We do anticipate it's going to be higher in the, in the next few weeks and months ahead. Look, we've got two and a half million dollars in the bank right now. We've got an exploration program for 2022 of probably somewhere between seven, eight million dollars. Now, we've already paid for the most part for our Sundog project. So some of that, most of that's already spent. So as we get into the summer months and we're looking to, you know, fund out Davidson River, there'll be an opportunity to do another capital raise down the road. Not now. We're, we're good for the next six months. And we anticipate there will be a window in that period where we'll be raising money again. But right now, we're focused on drilling Sundog, getting some good results out of there, and then moving right into Davidson River, drilling that one throughout the summer, and then moving to our eastern projects. Here's the, here's the thing. Like I say, it was, I say this to companies, you know, less than 30 million bucks, less than 20 million bucks. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a, you've got a whole bunch of different problems compared to other CEOs of, of slightly larger companies where you know they're not necessarily capital constrained either. 
you've got different decision making to, um, to, to, you know, conversations need to be had about how you allocate capital, you know, getting the best bang for your buck, being able to tell a, a story and a narrative into the market about why this is a growth story, et cetera, while all the meantime kind of looking over your shoulder and hoping that we, there's nothing, you know, announced in the market, which will, which will change your fortunes, you know, being out of your control. How do you move this from what looks like pretty much sideways movement for the last 18 months or so, two or two years, I think, since we, we we first met. You've been at it a long time. Why is no one paying attention to this story? Uh, that's a good question. I wouldn't say no one's paying attention. I mean, one thing I will say is a company of our size, we've got incredible uh, you know traction in the market with a variety of things like uh, you know with our volatility or our liquidity and our share price. But let me walk you back in step two years. If you're looking at an exploration company like ours, you really need to pay attention to, are these are these guys doing things properly? And when I say that, you have to have infrastructure in place. You have to walk through from stage one all the way through to stage 10. And what does that mean to the general investor who may not be aware? Look, you can't just show up and tell everyone you're going to be doing a drill program. It doesn't work like that. You've got to show up. You've got to meet your First Nations partners. You've got to build those relationships. You have to sign agreements. You've got to get good projects. You have to build a team of qualified geos. We've been building our team of geos now for three years, adding qualified people each step of the way. And our team is now phenomenal. We've got five or six geos who have made discoveries in this region. They know the rocks. They know the area. So we've done that. We've got the First Nations. We've got the project. We've got the team. Now, what else do you have to do? You have to get all your permits in place from the Saskatchewan government. You've got that. And then what do you need? You have to have vendors. If you don't have drillers to do the work, you don't have helicopters, you don't have a place to have a camp or have the ambulance crews, all those things have to be put in place. We've got all that now. So you mark, check all those boxes. We're now ready to continue our exploration programs, which we're doing. We've said everything that we're going to be doing, and we've hit every single milestone along the way, except for making that big discovery. But we believe we're on the path to making that. It just takes time. You've got to have all those things lined up, and you've got to execute. And now we're executing. We're drilling Sundog. We're drilling Davidson River. We're going to move our Eastern Basin projects. It's all coming together at this time. Now we just need to have that uh, have that discovery. And our geos are pretty excited about the types of rocks we're seeing right now. So, so if if I read you correctly, what you're saying is it, you need to have your ducks on the right. You need to get things lined up. And, and, and to be fair to you, I was yeah. reading some of the things that you have been doing, putting in place. Looks like you have it. It it just seems to take a little bit longer than perhaps your show, shareholders understand, or perhaps mm-hmm. people looking at you understand. But you, do you think you're there now? I mean, what what is 2022 sure. meant to be? Is it more admin, or, or can you start motoring now? Uh, well, we're driving forward with exploring. So we've got uh, you know our largest exploration season yet to date, drilling on Sundog and then David's River, and then moving our Eastern Basin projects along. All we need to do is continue to drill, drill, drill. And I know people say, well, why aren't you why don't you raise 20 million and drill twice as much? Well, the question comes down to you know, how much dilution do we want to put in front of our shareholders? Do we want to raise money? a whole whack of money at this price, or do we believe that we're going to step it up program by program and continue to raise money at a higher equity each time? And that's what we've done. We've raised at 15 cents, 20 cents, 24 cents. And we're hoping that, uh, and hopes on a strategy, we're planning to do our next capital raise at a higher valuation as well. Right. Okay. And, and if, if I look at, I, what, what sort of intrigues me is that Athabasca, you know, very, very well-known, prolific, some, some, uh, in terms of mm-hmm. uranium grades and some of the valuations of some of the companies are extraordinary. Um, there's also a lot of smaller explorers in there trying trying to to do those things, go through the motions. I mean, how do we decide which one of you guys or which handful of you guys are in, truly investable? Um, yeah. Because you all say the same things, right? So that that makes it hard. Yeah, of course. Well, listen, it's it's a it's a tough. I mean, I. I I really understand and sympathize for some investors who come to the States and they're trying to figure out who's who in the zoo. What I like to tell investors is, look, take a look at the people who are running these companies. Have they had success? Are they doing what they said they were going to do? Are they progressing their projects? Are they just waving their arms around? Are they the ones who are out marketing hard because they believe they've got a story to tell and they've got projects worthwhile exploring and worthwhile spending money on? Look, it's not it's not free to go out there and explore. You have to raise money to drill and you have to drill to make to make a discovery. And that's what we've been saying we're going to be doing. And every every next drill could be that discovery or you just don't know when it's going to hit. It's yeah. Well, okay, I I, I, I can I, I buy that, but um, 
And, and wh how, how are you reading the way that th those guys are actually talking to the market versus the way? We, we, we kind of had, had a joke around about the amount of videos that you're creating and get, getting people to kind of come in and take a look mm -hmm. at how, what you're doing on a daily basis, how you're spending the money, et cetera. But it, yeah. it, it seems that, you know, obviously the market moves, well, it, it, it did a lot of heavy lifting last year for uranium yeah. companies. What do you think it's going to take going forward? I mean, are, are you cognizant of the fact that there's a, a lot of white noise, there's a lot of similar stories. It is hard mm. to decipher, you know, what's real and what's not these days. So w again, I'll come back. It's probably the same question, but in a different way. Yeah. I'm hoping for a different answer. Yeah, well, the way I see it, look, if you go back in time, maybe even last year there were, you might have, uh, you know, maybe 40, 30 or 40 uranium companies. In the next year, two years, we're going to see a lot more uranium companies coming in. So for investors, you really need to figure out, you know, which companies are you following and which ones do you, do you think are going to be have the potential to make those shots. For us, we also like to put, put take a look at you know, who else believes in our story. Is it just a you know a bunch of moms and pops putting their family money in, or are there significant institutions coming in with us? Significant players who are pretty smart in the space that are recognized as uh, you know the Iranian experts who are investing in us. And yes, we have those people investing with us. They've been investing with us all along. We encourage you to figure out who those people are and uh, take a look on some of our presentations. Uh, we're not going to tell you who they are right now, but they're out there. We've talked about that before, and and look. Smart people in the uranium space believe in our company and they're continuing to invest with us. And I think that's a really smart sign for people to take notice of, especially for a company. You know, we're a 25 million market cap company right now. We haven't made that discovery. And that's where the huge upside is for investors. If you believe that our company has got what it takes, there is an opportunity to invest with us prior to that discovery. And those numbers can be can be staggering, life-changing. Uh, if you look at you know some of our peers, the next gens, the ISO energies, the visions who made that discovery and then their their share price was you know 20x within a year to a year and a half which is remarkable and that's the kind of stuff investors really want to have the opportunity to participate with okay well like um I, I guess I guess I just want to sort of dip in and say like you know what what are you up to what's the plans what you know what, what what's going on I'm 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 so on the on the drill front totally get it and maybe potentially on, on the mm -hmm. raising additional funds okay fine that's 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 interesting I'm more intrigued with when do we get to find out who these industry people are who are investing in you? Because that could be quite telling. Um, do we ever find out or is it a mystery? Yeah, we've, we've talked about it several times. I mean, if you look at um, our share registry on our presentations, you can see we've got the, we've got the, you know, the Mike Allison, the Station Coles have been there. We've got the L2 Capital with Marcelo Lopez. We've got Tribeca with Guy Keller. We've got Azari's Capital. You know, it's a pretty smart um, uranium-specific funds that believe in believe in our story, which we think is a, a huge home run for our shareholders to understand that as well. Right, but but, but what is the, I think this is an important bit, right? Because you know those guys invest across the board. They're taking a blanket approach to yeah. the thesis of the supply demand fundamentals for uranium, which have not changed despite of what's mm -hmm. going on in, in, in Russia and, and uh, in Ukraine. Um, and it's just that is a case of the mo the movement of uranium will change and i guess there's a few decisions going to be made on sanctions around um w whether or not the us will be taking um russian uranium um in the near future or not but but that's them yeah. taking a blanket approach not all investors can afford to take a blanket approach you know across the board so again i'm just wondering in terms of the strategic shareholders which could who aren't funds maybe industry mm -hmm. people who could help either by taking part of your part of your project, part of the company, yeah. part of mm -hmm. one of the assets. I mean, in, in, any, in any number of ways that you, you could spin this, um, which would give yeah. us some feeling of the fact that maybe you do have something here. You haven't got a discovery yet. So that, I guess that's the hard bit. But if you do get yeah. a discovery, are you the guys to move that thing forward or are you just con conscious of dilution? I mean, again, what, what are the options? Uh, on the it's table? an interesting, uh, interesting point you bring up can tell you that we've been in discussions with multiple peers. Uh, we have not yet made the decision to take funds from other peers to sort of get them involved with our projects. We still believe we are the we are the people that drive these projects forward and raise capital and get all that value for our shareholders. There's opportunities for us down the road to do some MA type of activities with some of our projects. And uh, you know, we're looking at those all the time, whether that's people coming into our projects or us investing into other projects. But we believe North America is going to be a remarkable place to be invested in the next number of years. And we're currently only in Canada, but there's no saying that we won't go into the U.S. as well. We think there's great opportunities there too. For, for M and A, really? Dif yeah. Right. Okay. Where? 
Well, if you look to the U.S. and where the majority of the exciting projects are, that's where the, those are the areas we're looking at. Okay. Okay. There we go. John, nice update. Um, stay in touch. Can I come on board a bit more regularly? Because we've got some um, good and strong views um, about how, how things are moving. And I suspect if uh, the market figures out what on earth is going to happen off the back of Russian sanctions, it'll it'll affect your yeah. your position greatly. Um, so, yeah, we'll see you soon, John. Definitely. We look forward to uh, being back, Matt. I'm sorry. <laughs> and speaking to you and giving you updates and particularly potentially speaking on a few panels. I'm going to be out marketing across a number of conferences and you'll be watching for our uh, corporate updates coming from our, from our drill sites. And uh, I know our investors have got a lot of questions for us and we look forward to speaking to them through uh, Twitter and various channels. So once again, thanks for having me on and I look forward to uh, future updates.